Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, I'd ask that you please rise. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the Mace Bearer for this morning's uh, convocation ceremony, Donna Jamison, a faculty member in our Faculty of Health and Community Studies and the chair of the Child and Youth Care Program. The University Mace that she is carrying became the official Mace of the University in 2008. It was uh, hand carved and was served as a walking stick for the University's namesake, Dr. J.W. Grant McEwen. There's more information located in your program on page six should you wish to read more about the University Mace and the University's traditions for convocation. Please remain standing now for the convocation processional.
graduands, distinguished guests, members of the stage party, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mike Seklich, University Registrar and Marshal of Convocation. Please remain standing and in respect, remove all hats except mortar boards for the singing of our national anthem led by Ms. Shannon Hunt. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. Please be seated. I declare Grant McEwen University Convocation open. It is intended to honor our 2013 graduates. We are honored to have you present with us on this occasion. The word convocation comes from the Latin word convoco, which means to call together by summons. It is traditionally used in connection with an ecclesiastical or academic gathering. Convocations are called for the conferring of degrees, diplomas, certificates, for special announcements, and for the recognition of outstanding achievement. So it is today we call colleagues and friends together to honor McEwen University's graduates and award recipients at our fall 2013 convocation. For the invocation, I now call upon Mr. Josh Stock, the student member of our Board of Governors. Good morning, McEwen University's invocation. Through learning, we flourish and help others to flourish. We stand here today on the brink of important change for ourselves and for the world. Inspired by the past, we now step forward to transform the future. Engaging with others, we cherish the diversity of experience within our communities and ourselves. Through perseverance, we excel. Through compassion, we connect. Through creativity, we thrive. Through knowledge, we grow. Through all this and more, let us forge a legacy to nurture, to inspire, to endure. Moved by the spirit, strong in our knowledge, we move out into the world with open arms, open mind, and open heart we pledge to leave the world better than we found it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stock. I would like to now introduce members of the stage party. Members of the stage party, please stand when you're introduced and remain standing. Audience, please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. I would like to start with our Board of Governors Chair, Mr. John Day, President David Atkinson, Provost and Vice President Academic, Dr. John Corlett, and Academic Governance Council Vice Chair, Mr. Chris Hancock. Would members of our Board of Governors please rise? Now I would like to ask our Vice Presidents and Associate Vice Presidents to rise. Now I turn to our Deans and Associate Deans and members of the University's Administration to rise. 
and now representatives of each of our associations, faculty, staff, student, and alumni advisory council to rise. Joining us today are also members of our academic faculty and staff. Will all faculty and staff of the university please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your stage party. This is your university. Please join me now in acknowledging them. Please be seated. I'd like to now call upon Board Chair Day to bring greetings on behalf of McEwen University's Board of Governors. Well, welcome on this snowy day, and thank you to everyone who's able to join us this morning. Graduates, honored guests, our president, vice presidents, family, friends, staff, faculty, students, and alumni. I also want to acknowledge my fellow board members, some of whom are in attendance today for all their hard work. Josh Stock, John Mitchell, and Andy Rhodes. Thank you for generously contributing your time and expertise in providing direction to this university. We're blessed at McEwen University. We have a great board. After today, 198 students from the Faculty of Health and Community Studies and 40 students from the Faculty of Arts and Science will be entering the city's workforce and making a difference. My role in this convocation ceremony is an exciting one. Not only do I get to shake hands with each of you grads, I get to congratulate our distinguished alumni recipient and our afternoon's distinguished awards citizen, former Mayor Stephen Mandel. For the past three years, I've served as the university's board chair. During this time, the university has made a number of gains in strengthening its position of Alberta as, one of, as one of Alberta's finest universities. And since September, the university's athletic teams have been cleaning up with the provincial and national championships in anticipation of playing in Canada West in, tw in 2014. So we're very happy about that. Every step taken by the university throughout the past 40 years has been to approve upon the student experience. I know you're thinking that uh, w with our plan to move forward with the single sustainable campus, that you're thinking that this plan is about buildings and moving students and construction projects. But a campus is more than a building. It's more than a collection of buildings. As all our graduates know, a campus is about community. And McEwen University has an amazing community of students. As part of one single sustainable consolidated campus, students will have greater access to the services, amenities, and community already available to the students at the city center campus. Some of these things that will be included in the city center campus as new experience for people from other campuses will be the Aboriginal Education Center, counseling and academic and financial advising, career and graduate school services, special on-campus events, the beautiful two-story library, of course, our student residences, Griffin's athletic events, and of course, the fitness center and pools. I'm sure I've forgotten some things, but that, those are some of the aspects of consolidating on our campus. Student retention is affected by the amount of access students have to the full complement of services and activities available on campus. As a post-secondary institution, the best investment, of course, that we can make is in our students. The desire to consolidate our core activities of teaching, learning, research, and creative activity on one site is framed by sustainability, both economic and environmental, by student-centeredness, and by urban community engagement. A key part of our plan is the anticipated addition of a Students' Association building. See somebody smiling over there. This project is made even more meaningful because the Board of Governors is working closely with the Students' Association. McEwen is also planning for the construction of a new academic building by the west side of the city center campus. Without it, 
McEwen University will encounter restrictions to programming and the student experience will be limited. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, our next step is to move 1,000 full-time students and 400 part-time students from the South Campus to City Centre for the 2014-2015 school year. Even as we consolidate, McEwen University is committed to maintaining its class sizes, no mean feat. In an era of reduced budgets and pressure to in increase enrollments, this is a challenge. But small class sizes are fundamental to what McEwen University is. Our commitment to our students is what McCade made McEwen what it is. We have no intention of losing sight of that. In true McEwen fashion, all faculties, staff, students, alumni, and community supporters were invited to participate in our recent rebranding consultation process. Everyone had an opportunity to voice who we are and what we represent. Those who took part found inspira inspiration like I did and reminded ourselves of our commitment to our students and our community. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who participated so extensively in that consultation process. Nowhere else have I seen such enthusiastic students and alumni who are so emotionally invested in this university. This spirit, the McEwen University spirit, is captured in one of our university pillars, one of eight that emerged from the rebranding process. These eight big ideas symbolize the heart of the university's identity. I'm so encouraged to see how engaged our students and alumni are in this community. Our future is in good hands if our McEwen University graduates are any indication of this next generation. I can't wait to see what the future holds for all of you. You're a part of this city and will forever be a part of McEwen University. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Board Chair Day. I would like to now call upon Dr. David Atkinson to address convocation. Mr. Board Chair, members of the Board of Governors, honored guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and always and most important on this occasion uh, to our graduates. Welcome everybody to Fall Convocation for 2013. Convocation is always a great event for any university. Indeed, it's the best event of the year. It is when we stop to celebrate the accomplishments of our students and by so doing reflect on the accomplishments of our university. It is you, our students, who are the lifeblood of McEwen, for it is through you that we measure our success and convocation is first and foremost about recognizing your success and celebrating it. Today's convocation is actually special in another way. Uh, we have gone through, as our board chair told you, a rather extensive rebranding exercise and one of the results of that is that the institution's official colors have been changed from their previous blue to the current colors we are all wearing today. So all of you who are wearing these robes, take a picture. It's the first time they've been worn, and we hope they weather the next 10, 20, or 30 years that we will be using them. There are many to be thanked for getting our students to today, to parents, grandparents, partners, friends, and family members. We owe a debt of gratitude. We must thank our faculty who have had so much to do with shaping the students graduating today. And we must not forget to express appreciation to the many others who make up McEwen's community, to its staff, who work so hard to further McEwen's role as an outstanding undergraduate university, to our students' union who work to ensure the well-being of our students, and to our board of governors who give of their time and wisdom in shepherding the institution through some very challenging times. And there is, of course, our broader community. 
including our alumni and friends and many of you who are with us today who work tirelessly on behalf of the university. We must remember, too, that McEwen University is a publicly funded institution. Our institution belongs to the people of Alberta, and we therefore owe thanks to the people of Alberta for their wisdom in supporting post-secondary education. We are also obligated and held accountable to them for how we use their significant investment. We are fond of saying that in universities there is at once a private good and a public good. The private good goes to you, our students. Your education has prepared you for a successful career and for a good life in all the fullness of how that is defined for you. Now we know that each one of you has paid tuition and has made significant investments of time and energy but be assured that over the course of your lifetime, your investment will be more than repaid. We must not forget that universities are really about the public good, about preparing their graduates to be responsible and responsive citizens, able to understand the world, to address its problems, and to find solutions. This understanding lies behind the concept of the public university, one that supports the public good. It also underlines how each graduate, every one of you, each in your own way, has a responsibility to give back. McEwen aspires to be a university which places community engagement at the center of what it does. And this is best achieved through our students and our graduates who themselves engage in making their communities better places. In recent times, universities have faced enormous change and an unprecedented questioning about their purpose and value. In the new world of MOOCs and private universities and colleges, financial strain and increased government oversight Universities are being required more and more to look at themselves and more to the point to reshape themselves. This is no more the case than at McEwen, which has experienced enormous change in making the transition from college to university. That this has required a careful evaluation of our purpose and goal, goals goes without saying. It is an ongoing process in the face of unrelenting change. While it introduces an element of insecurity into the institution, it also provides a sense of excitement, anticipation, and newness. A number of years ago now, the American scholar Alan Bloom rather darkly expressed that the contemporary university possessed no vision of what an educated human being is. He spoke of its incoherence and incompatibility with how we interpret the world. I would counter by saying, we're all still here, a testament to our value and our purpose, and this is no more ably demonstrated than in the students graduating today. You take from your time here a potential and an energy that is going to be totally transformative, and one which will drive our city, our province, and indeed our world. A week and a half ago, I watched our women's soccer team play in the national finals in Vancouver. Fittingly, by the way, in the rain. We had the lead, but it was only one goal, and nothing is over until it's over, or that is, until our side scored a second goal. The good news is that McEwen won and became a national champion for the first time in our history. But the better part of the story is the elation of our players as they celebrated what was achieved through hard work, commitment, and a sense of how together they came to make something special come true. I like to think that this is what we celebrate today at Convocation. It is an ending of sorts, but just as there's always another game, there's always an additional goal or purpose. So my message to you today is to take joy from what you have accomplished. 
But do not become complacent. Do not aspire to be ordinary. There is too much of this in the world already. Our world is increasingly ubiquitous at the expense of individuality, independence, and creativity. Take chances. Do not become comfortable with the ordinary. Question things. Do not be a bystander. Only then will you fully appreciate what you have been given and the responsibility that goes with it. Let's face it. Journalism is all about bad news, especially if you read the Toronto papers these days. <laughs> Headlines inevitably focus on calamity. Again, if you read the Toronto papers today. <laughs> on what we have done wrong and on someone else's misery. Every front page of every newspaper in the world is pretty much the same. Now, no one denies the hardship and suffering in our world, which has perhaps reached unprecedented levels. But these challenges will not be solved by agonizing over them. It will require resolve, courage, and optimism for the future, and an understanding that we all can make an impact. We might well remember what Mother Teresa observes. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Certainly, we worry about change. But the point is that change is not replacement, it is enrichment. We live in a world where we seem to deal with the fragmented. We design strategies to access what we need. We seem so often to see a mile wide, but only half an inch deep. We are consumed by the moment. If you are to take up the responsibility presented to you, you must step past the superficial and deal with what energizes true change. It may not transform the world, but it will make a difference. Very recently, I had the honor of being invited to Buckingham Palace, not something that happens every day, to be presented to Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. As much a thrill as this was, it is not the thing I will most remember from that day. Coincidentally, at this same event, was a young Pakistani girl dressed in a bright red sari. She is the young woman known to all of us as Malala. Now only 16, she has since the age of 12 been a courageous spokesperson for the education of girls in a place where the education of girls was prohibited. There was, as we all know, an attempt on her life, which she miraculously survived, to continue her work on behalf of girls and young women struggling under Taliban rule. Malala is today an international personality, and her book, of course, has only just been released. Now, few of us can aspire to be as this young woman, but we can all look to her as an example of courage and as a source of inspiration. We would all be wise to look to her as an example of what can be achieved from very ordinary beginnings. Congratulations to all of you, and have a terrific day. Thank you. Thank you, President Atkinson. I now call upon Mr. Ed Boodle, Alumni Advisory Council Chair, to introduce our distinguished alumni, Mr. Ben Weinlich. Good afternoon. On behalf of McEwen Relations and Services, sorry, good morning. <laughs> we all showed up a little late this morning. You know, I was thinking about that on my way here. I said, you know, there's only one way to get 200 students in a room, and so either put a free sign, a sign outside that says free beer, or a, uh, offer them uh, their diplomas and their degrees. So, uh, good morning. On behalf of McEwen Alumni Relations and Services, I'd like to welcome you as new alumni and wish you the very best in your future endeavors. 
Each year, Alumni Relations and Services recognizes the contribution and achievement of one of our alumni. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to Ben Weinlich. Ben is the founder of the Think Jar Collective, a group of creative people from diverse sectors who are trying to affect social innovation and positive change in human services, community health, and beyond. Ben has written a number of articles on enhancing creativity in organizations. He is also a facilitator, teacher, and trainer in human services, challenging individuals and organizations to create meaningful community connections for all citizens. In 2010, Ben was awarded a grant by the Alberta Health Services to research, develop, and implement a training program for workers with, within the disability sector. As a senior manager at Skills Society, Ben works diligently to improve the lives of people with disabilities. Ben leads Project Citizenship, collaboration with the Nina Haggerty Center for the Arts, Skills Society, and the University of Alberta. This project has resulted in an increased awareness of the full citizenship for people with disabilities through stories highlighting the contributions people with disabilities are making in their communities. Ben was also instrumental in the launch of the community tea van, a mobile tea house that creates an opportunity for people to gather and connect. Ben has a keen intellect, a great sense of humor, and an ability to think outside the box. He uses these traits to create innovative approaches to his work and invites others to be better by asking tough questions in a general and fun manner. Ben mentors students from McEwen in field placement and routinely returns to the classroom, providing students with inspirational stories. He has had a tremendous impact on the lives of people with developmental disabilities in Edmonton. He is a true community builder and embodies the belief that strong communities have the capacity to recognize and appreciate the gifts of all citizens. And just this month, Ben was also named one of Edmonton's top 40 under 40 by Avenue Magazine. Please join me in, in congratulating Ben Weinlich for being honored as one of 2013's Distinguished Alumni Recipients. Thank you for your immense contributions to McEwen University, our community, and our alumni. So congrats to everybody. Um, I'm sure that you finished your coursework and graduated a lot faster than I did. I should have graduated in about 2001, I think, but ended up procrastinating. I was 99% done, and I had that one last course to finish. So I actually was 2007 when I finally graduated. But um, I'm honored to be here and to be uh, recognized in this way. I want to thank McEwen University, the Disability Studies Program, as well as my mentors and colleagues who've inspired and helped me along the way. It's pretty weird that a guy like me is up here as distinguished. Um, I was also one of the guys 14 years ago when I was um, going into disability studies program that I had to take the special test to see if I could make it and handle the program. Um, so, you know, here I am. And, and I also can't grow a real mustache, which probably you need to, to be truly distinguished. But uh, even though it's no, Movember, it's just not, not going to happen. Um, so, uh, so how did I end up here? I think much of it has to do with never being satisfied with doing things the way you're supposed to do them. Uh, I've always been kind of a questioner, a boat rocker, and an idealist. And also I've been fortunate to have lots of cool mentors along the way that have shown me in, their, in a lot of them 30 plus years of working in human services in the disability sector that you can keep your idealism and your sense of humor through all that with lots of changes and um, reduction of resources and things like that. So you don't have to give that up as you do more adult things in life and in your, in your careers. And actually, in our time, um, great innovators like Tim Brown, if you know the company, IDEO, probably some of the the products you have in your pockets um, were designed and developed with help from those guys. They're big innovators in our, in our world. And they said, if you really want innovation, which is really what I'm interested in, you need to think like a child, which has somehow come easily to me over my time. Um, so it's been this ability to embrace curiosity, not be afraid to look like a fool. Um, it's helped me to see things differently and possibly, you know, from time to time, do some innovative things in the social sector. I still have tons to learn and tons to do in this, in this work. So, you know, growing up as a kid, I guess I was kind of creative. I was one of the kids that had the special side of the classroom um, because I disrupted the class too much. Uh, I was always trying to do things differently. And even when I was about five, my parents were trying to put me uh, into piano lessons. And I said, no, I wanted to take dulcimer lessons like dulcimer, I still have that thing, but so I was always, for some reason, doing this. My brain's kind of hardwired in that way to do things differently. Um, 
So I've been really good at kind of taking these divergent paths, crossing the line, and getting sent to the timeout chair. I drove people nuts, probably still do, but really there's something to this disruptive stuff um, that's a, about a passion for authenticity, that it's about curiosity, humor, and trying to do things differently and see things. And eventually I learned that can sometimes, and notice I say sometimes, because you don't always have to do that, but sometimes it can be helpful to uh, innovate and spark new possibilities and lead change. Um, so I'm an artist at heart, and I learned that once I learned that seeing in that way, I, for a while I kind of pushed the artist, artistic side aside. I thought it's kind of juvenile, don't, don't do that anymore, I gotta do adult things. But eventually I learned that that way of seeing is really essential for lots of different fields, especially in human services, to think differently, um, to try to do things in a new way. So that's when things really started to take off. Um, and how do they take off? Well, they took off in the way that I got fired from my first job, right out of, uh, McEwen, so that was in 2001 or so. And uh, are you sure you still want to call me distinguished? Getting fired? But uh, what I got fired for was arguing that a guy with a disability who wanted to be in the community should be allowed to go out and explore like any other citizen, and he shouldn't be held back by bureaucratic rules. And they thought, ooh, this guy's a bit, you know, a bit too much, he's boat rocking too much, so we better, uh, we better kick this guy out before something crazy happens. Um, but looking back, I'm really proud of being fired for that. And sometimes you need to push back and see and say how some rules oppress and hinder people's freedom and how that's wrong. You might get fired, but you'll be proud because you did the right thing. But I've also learned that those situations are rare and that you don't have to be a one-trick pony where all you can do is question and, and stick it to the man and all that kind of stuff. You gotta choose your battles wisely. And it's, certainly I've learned you have to do the least amount of damage to relationships. That's a really key thing. I've learned through lots of mistakes. So eventually after a lot of travel and working in various social sector jobs, I found an amazing group of colleagues at Skill Society. It's one of the largest disability service organizations in Edmonton. And some people there saw something in me that helped me learn and develop. And in my career, most of all, I've been really fortunate to have found these mentors that didn't just kind of pour you know, knowledge into the new, this, this ready vessel, um, but they really brought me into projects and saw me as an equal and we worked together and learned together. And that was really key. Um, and I really wouldn't be doing the kind of exciting work that I feel I'm able to do now without, without the help from those mentors. Um, so lastly, if you humor me for a moment, I'd like to pretend that I could offer a few pieces of advice. Um, although as one of my mentors said, advice is worth what you paid for it. And nobody paid to be here, right? Okay, that's good. Um, so what, a few, six pieces of advice are, that I've kind of learned through time. Find good mentors. Um, learn how to be a good lifelong learner. And seriously, having mentors is cool. I can, I can question things, and I you know, probably was titled having trouble with authority as a youth, but you know what? I learned, I always knew how to um, learn from others and looked up to people and be inspired by people. So that's cool, don't, don't lose that. Also make sure mentoring isn't just a buzzword thing, but be along, if you're a mentor out there, be alongside people and work with them. That really helps everybody grow. Number two, don't get stuck in silos. The best innovators and great thinkers look for ways to intersect and bring together disciplines. Um, if you look for what supports in the history of innovation, um, this is what people did. Great, great innovators, what they did is they brought lots of diverse fields. So some of the things I've been looking at is what can we learn from the design world and bring that into human services in that way. Um, so we seek to learn from other areas you're not familiar with. Uh, so they were, these people, these innovators were curious and they explored, so we should be like that. Three, study the classics and write your own rules. If you wanna do innovation, if you wanna do new things, lead change in your field, you have to know the history, you have to know your domain. You have to study that and look at that, and then over time, you can constructively start to challenge status quo assumptions. But you can't just go in kind of guns blazing and, uh, and challenge everything right off the bat. You gotta do some studying and learn that. So study the classics, write your own rules. Don't get too attached to a path. Um, you know, you have to make goals and do all the Stephen Covey seven habits thing, but also be open to the unexpected and try things outside your comfort zone. Be careful of biases. We all have a way of seeing the world. Uh, be willing to be wrong. Be willing to change your mind. And it sucks to be oppressed by someone's stiff assumption. But before you start going out there and trying to shake up people's assumptions, make sure you check your own biases. For instance, I have a more of a bias to divergent, wild, thinking outside the box stuff. And over time I had to learn, okay, I have to really also be practical and see how that fits. So I've had to develop that other part of myself that I'm not often used to. So check your biases. Uh, as George Bernard Shaw said, those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. And lastly, don't be afraid to be weird. 
but good weird. Um, bad weird is when we believe the way we see things is all there is. Bad weird is people using power to control a situation rather than being curious about other perspectives. Bad weird is being just a manager and not a leader. Good weird is not being afraid to be yourself. Good weird is admitting when you're wrong and being excited about possibilities. Good weird is being a dreamer and noticing something is interesting or odd uh, in the everyday. And good weird is not taking yourself too seriously. So thanks very much. I wish you the best with your careers in these exciting times and don't be afraid to think differently. You might get fired from your job once in a while, but you keep growing and learning, which is all that matters. Keep it good weird. Thank you, Mr. Weinlich. I would like to now invite Dr. John Corlett, Provost and Vice President Academic, along with Mr. Chris Hancock, Academic Governance Council Vice Chair, to their respective podiums for the presentation of graduates and the conferring of credentials. Good morning. On behalf of the faculties and schools of McEwen University, I present these graduands and those named in the convocation program who are not able to be at this ceremony. I ask that they be pledged and admitted to the McEwen University degrees, applied degrees, diplomas and certificates they have earned. Thank you. I'll ask all the graduates now to join uh, the McEwen University pledge and the pledge is an oath. It's not an oath but an expression of the purpose for which you will respond, I will. So I have a question for you. Will you pledge yourself to use the knowledge, experience, and skills that you've gained at McEwen University to serve your community and the world faithfully? You will respond with, I will. So you're supposed to say, I will. <laughs> Very good. So by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the province of Alberta, and upon the recommendation of McEwen University's Academic Governance Council, I admit to you to the degree, the diploma, or certificate to which you're entitled, and invest in you all the rights and privileges, powers, as well as the responsibilities pertaining to that credential. Now I, bespo now I bestow upon you this credential as a solemn trust so that you can transform, engage, and improve the world from this day forth to teach and to learn from others so that through your learning, we may all flourish. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Corlett and AGC Vice Chair Hancock. Our marshals will now usher the graduates to the stage. We welcome back the McEwen University Jazz Band as graduates are being assembled. I'm gonna live till I die. I'm gonna laugh instead of cry. I'm gonna take the town and turn it upside down. I'm gonna live and live and live till I die. They're gonna say, what I got I'm gonna play for the stars Ain't gonna miss a thing I'm gonna have a fling I'm gonna live, live, live Till I die The blues I lay low I'll make them stay low They'll never trail over my dear I'll be a devil Till I'm an angel But until then Hallelujah Gonna dance Gonna fly, I'll take a chance, riding high Before my number's up, I'm gonna fill my cup I'm gonna live, 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 live Till I die
fine I'll take a chance riding high Before my number's up I'm gonna fill my cup I'm gonna live, live, live Till I die We will now commence with the individual presentation of our graduates. We would like to remind you that if you wish to take photos of your graduate, please come to the area at the right of the stage as we approach your graduate's name on the program. An usher will assist you to ensure the smooth flow of people in and out of this area. With the exception of those taking photos, we ask that you remain seated during the presentations out of respect for all graduates and their families. Offering congratulations to each graduate, our board chair Jay Day, AGC vice chair Hancock, Dr. Corlett, the faculty dean and program chair. President Atkinson will present each graduate with their credential on stage. He will be assisted by associate registrars, Mr. Tony Norad and Ms. Michelle Fraser. Off stage to your right is Ms. Peggy Gilchrist, Alumnus of McEwen University, Ms. Gilchrist will present each graduate with a gift on behalf of the McEwen University Alumni Advisory Council. I would ask graduates to return to their seats after receiving their credentials. And now, I'd like to call on Dr. Craig Monk, Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science, to present graduates. Good morning. I now present to you the following candidates for degrees in the Faculty of Arts and Science. Leading the graduates for the Bachelor of Arts Honors degree and the Bachelor of Arts degree, Program Chair, Dr. Robert Wisnura. Gregory Carl Blomquist, honors with distinction. <laughs> Kirsty Jamie Lee Broadhead. <laughs> Tanya Budwani. Ashley Carr. Amanda Lee Carlson. Christopher Michael Joseph Kinash. Jordan Kelty Lang. Aaron James Lowe. Aisha Bibi Malik. Nsea Mwamba. Bria Shelley Russell. Achlam Abdul Hakim Sadik. Caitlin Brianne Short. Kyle Thomas Scott Sobey.
Daniel Robert St. Pierre. Emily Danielle Wesolowski. Lastly, leading the graduates for the Bachelor of Science degree, program chair Dr. Jonathan Withy. Norihisa Hayashi. <laughs> Jennifer Lucia Hapelshoten. <laughs> Stephanie Michelle Ibsen. Stephen Richard Lind. Shauna Lee Ullman. Lucas James Sheptiki. And finally, Brent Richard Spradbrow. I present to you those graduates from the Faculty of Arts and Science unable to be present whose names are listed in the program. Thank you, Dean Monk. I would like to call upon Sharon Buchhalter, Dean of the Faculty of Health and Community Studies, to present graduates. Good morning. On behalf of our faculty and staff, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the following candidates for certificates, diplomas, applied degrees, and degrees from the Faculty of Health and Community Studies. To welcome our graduate for the Bachelor of Child and Youth Care degree, please welcome Program Chair Donna Jameson. Finally, Megan Grace Auger. Leading our graduates for the Bachelor of Applied Human Service Administration degree, please welcome Program Chair Pat Morgeswishen. <clears throat> Eliza Jean Brett with distinction. <clears throat> Caroline Campbell with distinction. And finally, Donna Michelle Markham with distinction.
to lead our graduates for diploma in acupuncture. Please welcome instructor Darren Tellier. Sume Carol Cheng. Vanessa Marie Groshan. Kimberly Joanne Rebel. Marjorie Ellen Socker. Wendy Lynn Taylor. <laughs> Jessica Serene Walker with distinction. <laughs> Felicia Marie Wallach. Kui Hong Yao with distinction. <laughs> to lead our graduates for diploma in correctional services. Please welcome Program Chair Kevin Hood. Rebecca Ann Cardinal. And finally, Aaron James White. to recognize our graduate for certificate in disability management in the workplace. Please welcome program coordinator, Sharon Chadwick. And finally, Jacqueline Rose Lafferty. To lead our graduates for diploma in disability studies, leadership, and community, please welcome program chair Karen Heslop. Amory Aletha Joyce Gavin. Finally, Mandeep Singh. <laughs> to lead our graduate for Diploma in Early Learning and Child Care, please welcome Program Chair Dr. Jane Hughes. Finally, Jessica Lois Davy.
to lead our graduates for diploma in hearing aid practitioner, please welcome program chair, Jean Duncan. And finally, Jessica Natasha Rondeau. We now recognize our graduates for Diploma in Holistic Health Practitioner. Our chair of the program, unfortunately, is ill today, Gail Couch. So we'll join our procession to greet our graduates in holistic health. Thank you. Marianne Bonnie Doucette, with distinction. Cecilia Fenger Anderson. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Gruber. <laughs> Nicole Catherine Labrie. <laughs> Jenna Joyce Lang. Angel Lynn Heather Lenko. <laughs> Tara Ashley McIntyre. <laughs> Stacy Aaron Mitter Trainer. Riley Britton Mick. <laughs> Caitlin Grace Lees Scove. <laughs> Melanie Beth Allman. Cheryl Royce Wosenko, with distinction. <laughs> to lead our graduates for diploma in massage therapy. Please welcome program chair, Jeff Mogar. <laughs> Jessica Bernadette Barth. <laughs> Amy Lorraine Boulay. Keisha Bridges. <laughs> Linda Ching. <laughs> Rhiannon Pearl Tionko Kraus. Savannah Marie Crowchild. <laughs> Natalie Jean Ellison. <laughs> Beth Gaylene Freeman.
Nicholas Hruschak. Morgan Lee Lawrence. Sabina Ida Leffers. Brittany Chiffon Little. Josh Thomas Lockhart. Allison Adrian Lund. Kevin John Matheson. Caitlin Taylor. Alexandra Megan Upham. Brittany Morgan Walker. Ashley Robin Weiss. And finally, Jessica Zimmerman. To welcome our graduate for certificate in occupational health nursing, please welcome back program coordinator Sharon Chadwick. And finally, Terence Ivan Dukeshire with distinction. We now welcome our graduates for post-basic certificate in nursing with the specialty in hospice and palliative care and gerontology. Please welcome program coordinator, Nicole Simpson. Lisa Ann Bailey with distinction. Manpreet Kaur Brar. <laughs> Rohini Chebyam. <laughs> Rashna Devi. Manpreet Kaur Daliwal. Amandeep Kaur. Amanjat Kaur. Kamjit Kaur. Kaur. 
Rajwinder Kaur. Sandeep Kaur. Sumanpreet Kaur. Rajbir Kaur Kula. Manjot Singh Lakanpal. Manjit Kaur Sidhu. And lastly, Manmeet Singh. To lead our graduates for diploma in social work, please welcome Program Chair Kathleen Quinn. Alison J. Croucher. Salama Na Tang Bang Ganiyaman. Asma Saida Sai. And lastly, Natasha Lorraine Sutar. to lead our graduates for Certificate in Special Needs Educational Assistant. Please welcome Program Chair Dr. Jan Sunmark. Kelly Don Moser. Angelica Sanchez Castaneda. Lastly, And now, to welcome our graduate for diploma in therapist assistant, please welcome instructor Jody Marshall. And lastly, Nicola McCullough with distinction. I present to you those graduates in the Faculty of Health and Community Studies unable to be present 
whose names are listed in the program. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Bookhalter. This concludes the presentation of our graduates. Everyone, would you please join me in a round of applause acknowledging our graduating class of 2013! We will now move on to the presentation of student awards beginning with the McEwen Medal of Academic Excellence. I call upon Dr. Corlett. The McEwen Medal of Academic Excellence is awarded to graduates who have achieved a graduation grade point average of 3.7 or higher while completing their credential within a specified period of time. The recipient of this year's McEwen Medal is Dylan Clifford Wywad, a graduate of the Bachelor of Arts Honors Degree Program. The bad news is that Dylan is unable to be with us this morning. Uh, the good news is that he can't be here because he is pursuing graduate studies in Vancouver at Simon Fraser University. Please join me in congratulating Dylan. I'd like to call upon Dean Monk to present the Dean's Medal of Academic Excellence for the Faculty of Arts and Science. Dean's Medals are awarded to graduates who have achieved the highest graduating grade point average in their class. For the Faculty of Arts and Science, this year's Dean's Medal of Academic Excellence is awarded to Holly Ann Passmore, a graduate of the Bachelor of Arts program. Unfortunately for us, but fortunately for her, Holly Ann is unable to be with us this morning as she is pursuing her graduate studies at the University of British Columbia. On behalf of McEwen University, congratulations, Holly Ann. Dean Bookhalter, I would like to call upon you to present the Dean's Medal of Academic Excellence for the Faculty of Health and Community Studies. I challenged. Dean's Medals in Health and Community Studies are awarded to graduates who have achieved a high grade point average combined with excellence in practice. We are pleased to award two medals at this fall's convocation, one representing a graduate in a certificate or diploma program, and one representing a graduate in a degree program. So now, we are pleased to award the Dean's Medal to Lisa Ann Bailey, Lisa is a graduate of the Post-Basic Nursing Practice Certificate Program in Palliative and Gerontological Nursing. Congratulations, Lisa. This Falls Dean Medal Award for Academic Excellence in a Degree Program is awarded to Michelle Markham, a graduate of the Bachelor of Applied Human Service Administration Program. Congratulations, <laughs> Michelle.
Thank you, Dr. Corlett, Dean Monk, and Dean Buchalter. Let's have another round of applause for our student award recipients. <laughs> I would like to now ask Mr. Boodle, Chair, Alumni Advisory Council, to provide a welcome to the newest members of our university alumni family. Four college alumni were climbing a mountain one day. Each was from a big Alberta school, and each proclaimed to be the most loyal of all fans of their alma mater. As they climbed higher, they argued as to which one of them was the most loyal of all. They continued to argue all the way to the top of the mountain, and as finally as they reached the top, the Mount Royal alumni hurled himself off the mountain, shouting, this is for Mount Royal. Not wanting to be outdone, the University of Calgary alumni threw himself off the mountain proclaiming, proclaiming, this is for the University of Calgary. Seeing this, the McEwen alumni walked over and shouted, this is for everyone, and pushed the U of A graduate. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was taboo or not, but <laughs> I'm alumni. So good, mor or good morning on behalf of the alumni. I'm very pleased to be one of the first to congratulate you on your significant, significant achievement. Your hard work and commitment has led to this proud moment. I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome you as new alumni members. You are now part of a community of over 50,000 alumni who have graduated before you. Whether you're in Edmonton, rural Alberta, or around the world, Graduates of McEwen University continue to make an impact in their communities and in their working lives. Each and every day, graduates like you are bringing life to the knowledge that they gained here. Although your paths will be as unique as you are, one thing that will always connect you is your relationship with this university and the friendships you have made along the way. Alumni Services wants to extend your relationship with McEwen. While we are here to celebrate this milestone with you, you are, we are also here to celebrate your life's accomplishments. We want to hear from you two, three, four, ten years from now so that we can share your stories with other alumni, students, and faculty. As you move through the next phase of, phases in your career and your life, we hope you'll take a bit of us with you and always remember to give back to your school and come back and visit and share your story. Congratulations again, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors and hope you will use the alumni office to stay in touch with your McEwen family. Thank you, Mr. Boodle. This brings us to the closing moments of our ceremony. And at this time, I would like to thank all McEwen University volunteers, faculty, and staff who helped make today possible. We invite all our guests to join us for refreshments in the lobby following the recessional. And now, I would like to ask our board chair, Mr. John Day, to close convocation. Well, thank you, Mike. Well, congratulations to each of our graduates. Remember our motto, Descendo Floremus, through learning we flourish. I'd now like to invite all graduates to express their appreciation to the people who supported them throughout the educational journey. Would the faculty members please rise? Graduates, a round of applause. Thank you. Would the family and friends of our graduates please rise? Graduates, a round of applause for them. Now in turn, I'd like to invite our audience, faculty and staff to join me in congratulating our graduates for 2013. So for those of you who are standing, please remain standing. For those of you who are not, not standing, 
during the recessional, please wait until the uh, graduates have left the performance chamber before you exit. May Spare, University Registrar, will you please lead the recessional? I hereby declare this convocation closed.